a slapdash heist, or a stroke of genius. Grab your swim trunks and your aqua shoes. It's time for the series premiere of Mystery Files Debrief. Hello, thank you for joining us. I'm Ryan and that's Shane. Uh, each week on Debrief, we're gonna be revisiting these kooky cases going behind the scenes, answering your questions, and discussing your absolutely crazy theories. And this week's case is the first of the season and one of mine, the heist of DB Tuber. What a guy. Yeah, funny, funny guy. Funny guy. Yeah. I mean, he's a criminal, surely, but my guy. My guy. You know, I was lobbying hard for us to do this first Mystery Files debrief ever on a lazy river in the tubes ourselves, but... Are we saving that for the finale? Just wasn't in the budget this time around, but maybe next season. We're big tube guys, I and mean, we talk about this in the episode, we love lazy rivers, love tubes. So this is content straight down the straight down the barrel for me. When you sit in an inner tube, are you one of those guys that like hovers your butt above the water in the little donut? Like, you know, like this, where like you're kind of like sitting, but your butt's not touching the water? Or are you sitting all the way in the tube so your ass is skimming the water? I tend to get half my body underwater and just... You know, oh, so you're a hanger. I'm you're, a hanger. You're a Jack from the Titanic floater. Yeah, yes. And yeah. that he... He floated to the very bitter end, but uh... Except, yeah, up until then, yeah. All right, enough chit chat. Let's get into the theories. The case of DB Tuber was a strange one in which a hometown hero turned criminal mastermind attempted and nearly succeeded robbing a bank and escaping authorities on a lazy river raft. I love it. It is good. Really inspired stuff. And since this is a solved case, rather than discuss the theories, I'd like to take a moment to ask, what would you have done? How would you have robbed a bank? I could reframe that. Answer's not up there, mon frere. I think maybe the sewers? Oh shit. I think maybe the sewers. You'd scurry around like a little rat. I'd scurry around like a little rat. I think I'd use the sewers to my advantage. I'd steal all the money. I'd disappear down a manhole. The pipe's probably. gotta go somewhere. It's probably gonna smell so bad down there. And then I'm just staying down there. Forever. What if, what if the week I'm, of the- I'm living down there like splinter. But what if the week of the bank robbery was a, a town-wide- chili, chili fest? A chili cooking chili competition. Cook and now you're down in the sewers for like a week. No, 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 you don't understand. I'm living down there. I know, that's what I'm saying. You're Not a week. You're gonna live in the sewers. Yeah, with all my money. Oh, because they would think you ran away to a different place, but in reality, you just went down. Yeah, I'd be like Mike Myers in Halloween Ends, you know? Yeah, yeah, he retreats to everyone loves that movie. Maybe I'll eat people. Dogs, but I got a lot of money. I'm starting to what wonder what's the purpose of having all this money if you're just gonna be hiding in a sewer? Like, isn't that because it's mine? Um, what would you do? I definitely wouldn't do that because when it comes to stealing a large sum of money, most people think of like, oh, I'm gonna go spend the rest of my days now on a beach in Costa Rica or some shit. And you would not do that. You'd zag on them. No, I think I would do that. You I would, would do that. Oh, you're double bluffing. Well, I just think that makes more sense because they're also not going to find me there. But you'd go to if like. If you want to live in a world surrounded by shit where your currency means nothing, then sure. I mean, but go I'm for the it. king. You'd go to a tropical resort. You'd just go lean in on and be like, "Hi, I'm Ryan Bergara. I robbed a bank." No, no, no. I would just use some sort of alias and go to a place like you know, like Jamaica or something. Like I'm sure they have some all-inclusive resort. You join like a steel drum band. Exactly. Uh, I, and I would just live in the resort. I would say my name is, uh, you know, Bob Greengrass or something <laughs> like that. Bob Greengrass. <laughs> and then it'd be like, hello. They got some green grass down there in Jamaica. They do. Like. Like, my name's Bob Greengrass. Where can I get some green grass? Also, I'll take one membership to the Lazy River, please. Don't ask me why I'm paying cash only and why I'm carrying it in a Louis Vuitton duffel bag. Bob the robber. How would Bob rob? <laughs> I know the guy's name is DB Tuber. Well, that's we all, not his name. Well, it's his name. Um, <laughs> okay. I know his name was Anthony Curcio, but his name is DB Tuber. And I know this is weird to criticize his escape method in that he escaped on a tube because his name is DB Tuber and we all love that. How would you have escaped here? Would you have done the, the tube? Well, like I said, I'd probably go to the sewers. R removing the, the weird fantasy that you would not escape and that you would just... Uh -huh. Our sewers not a... That, that's what they did in the score starring Edward Norton. Marlon Brando. But we're moving the prospect of so you. So no sewers. Moving. Even if I don't live down there, I can't duck down to the sewers and. Yeah, but that's clearly not what you want to do. I'm saying removing the prospect of self-imposed exile, which you seem to have some weird fascination with. What would you actually do to escape a bank robbery 
particularly this one. Okay, if I can't do the sewers, I'm going in there with a balaclava on. I'm going in there, I'm like, give me all your money. And they're like, oh, what a scary guy. The purpose of you doing that voice is for me to accept that that's what you actually sound like, or this is just yeah, yeah, a, yeah, yeah, a bank yeah, robber yeah, putting yeah. on a scary yeah, voice. Because no, no, no. if it's the former, give me all your money. I don't think anybody sounds like Okay, it. well, okay, so I'm going to- Give me a voice that I actually could buy. This is a dude ordering a Starbucks. Give me all your money. <laughs> <laughs> Or I'll kill you. <laughs> so I do that whole thing, and then I go, I'm running away now. Pretend you're looking into the eyes of a bank teller, and this is your real voice. Hello, give me all your money or I'll kill you. It's sort of Australian. I'm not know. really sure where you're from. Then I say, oh, I'm gonna go now. <laughs> and I, I walk out of view, and then I change outfits. Yeah, yeah. And I, I just sort of, I tie my hands up with ropes, and I sidle up next to them, and I go, what was that all about? Who was that? I was on my way to the gym with my duffel bag here. They're like, okay, it seems like he's gone. I'd be like, that was scary, officers. All right, I'll see you later. It'd be tough for you to be the front man in a heist. Because of the way I look? Yeah. <laughs> because you're so tall. Yeah, I know. Like, you wouldn't blend in. You would have to be me in the, the But the what if lines. when I had my ropes on, I said, he was tall like me, huh? Yeah, that would kill, that would throw them off the scent. You know the thing is, DB Tuber actually had a pretty good escape strategy because he did escape. The only reason he got caught is because he was a dumbass and tossed wig evidence behind and all that kind of stuff. Like he took off DNA evidence and left a trail That's of it. That's tough, yeah. He breadcrumbed himself. Yeah. If he had not done that, the tube, excellent. The river moves pretty fast, I imagine. The river is wild. And it's also super sweet. And I've always wanted to go uh, white, ritter, uh, white river rafting. Well, that's hard to say. White water rafting. White. White water rafting. White water rafting. White water rafting. <laughs> Nailed it. And uh, this would be my chance to two birds, one stone this thing. Yeah. I feel like that money's gonna get wet though. Yeah, but it dries. You're right. You hang those babies out on the clothesline. Not suspicious at all. Yeah, just on a farmhouse, just hundred dollar bills. There's a big robbery in town, huh? Hmm. Strange. Well, just tending to my. Yeah, I just. <laughs> just gotta, drying my hundreds. Just gotta get back to folding my my clothes here. <laughs> just folding my little bills. Well, that's enough of that. Let's move on to the next section of Mystery Files debrief behind the scenes. Look at this, there's an empty chair. Who's that chair for, Shane? Uh, a ghost? Oh, no, it's for Annie. <laughs> Not on it's this for, show. It's for Annie. <laughs> Annie, let's welcome Annie to the set, uh, the director of Mystery Files. <laughs> oh, <look at> the <laughs> <love>. <laughs> Flawless introduction. It was so smooth, it was smooth like butter. You can spread that over a pancake and call it a day. We're also sitting very low. Yeah. <laughs> This is some like weird, like Hagrid's force perspective. Usually when I'm sitting in a chair, I'm barely more uh, No, this is usually how pillow. I sit. I sit like that. All right, well, Annie, <laughs> tremendous work on mystery <laughs> files. When we were creating this show, I had like a very basic concept of what it was gonna be. There was, we were gonna cover cases that were gonna be solved and unsolved. I wanted it to be in a basement. I wanted it to be centered around a projector, kind of like uh, the kids from It when they were trying to find out what was going on with Derry. It was a very basic kind of like template. And then I told Annie and then Brittany, Brittany Lee, the uh, producer of the show, fill it in. And that must've been pretty daunting. So what was that process like? And, and he's being a little flowery right now. What actually happened is he showed up on a Monday morning. His <laughs> eyes were bloodshot, he was wearing sunglasses. Yeah. He walks over to Andy's desk. He says, this shit's brilliant. And he slid a piece yeah. of paper on her desk. It just said, mystery five. Exactly. And he said, yeah. do it. And do then it. he left. Yeah. No. And we didn't see him for six months. I didn't say do it. I was like, where's the cut? <laughs> and, but, and, and Andy was like, we have to shoot it first. <laughs> and I was like, I didn't ask for your excuses. I asked for results. Like that penguin from Madagascar. Remember him? Anyways. I'm not clocking that no, one. No, we don't know that. Not anyway, Madagascar. in truth, it was a, a very sort of, it was a framework. This was like the true definition of like a team effort and they did not have a lot to go off of <laughs> when no. it came to just the basics. So like they had to basically make the show what it is. So I, I what, what, how was that experience? Yeah, it's very daunting having so many avenues to go down and not knowing which ones to go yeah. down. But the way Ryan communicates is on Slack, where he just types one message at a time. So you're just kind of like, <laughs> uh <-huh." laughs> 20 different Slacks yeah. um, sent 10 seconds from each other. But yeah, it, 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 was, it was an interesting experience. I hadn't really worked on anything 
super research-based in the past, even though I've been working with you guys for years and yeah. years. Yeah, it's a lot more like uh, we've worked together for a very long time. You were at BuzzFeed with us in the unscripted department. The creator of the original Berry Boys video. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> that's true, and I think we bring that Berry Boys energy to Mystery Files, and that's, she just brings it out of us. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> but I, I can say that uh, you guys worked incredibly hard on it and it shows. Oh yeah. Um, and also, uh, the day that we showed up and the set had been uh, constructed here, shout out to the incredible production designer Billy Jett, uh, who was also responsible for the Ghost Files wall and the Puppet History set, uh, the current season. It was incredible. <laughs> it yeah. was like, it, it felt like walking into uh, a different it was like walking into someone's house. A basement. Indeed. Uh, it, well, we are in a basement. I don't know what you're talking about. You know, all the set design and all that stuff. <laughs> the best part was when you guys would just reference people upstairs with no context. Yeah, it was, it's <laughs> my, it's Mari. <laughs> I all, hope people understand that. All of our wives live upstairs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, is there anything in particular that you were worried about, but then pleasantly surprised by when it came to how it came out? like in, in, the final, in the final product? I'm just a worrier, so I just expect everything to go wrong yeah, when I show too. up. Yeah. I think it's always just like worrying about whether it'll flow or not, but you guys have that rapport already, so usually you can, you can just pull things out of your butt and have it be good. Well, thank you. <laughs> That's, I feel like you're very similar to me in um, when it comes to unscripted stuff. I could never, ever, ever produce or direct something like Ghost Files no. because being on location, I mean, you saw it with like the first season yeah. and, or two of uh, Weird Wonderful when we did yeah. that. I get so stressed out when we're like in a location, we have to get something. I love nothing more than a lockdown set <laughs> where it's just like, yeah. all right, the people are here. And then after we shot Mystery Files, I slacked Brittany and Annie and it was just like, I, I think you need to hear directly that this was an amazing job that you guys did on this series because it wouldn't be made if it wasn't for you two and it came out great. Yeah. Because uh, I could feel the worry that we all yeah. feel when we're creating something. Yeah, sometimes you just really feel rating, rating an awesome person and that was me because I was just shaking. That happens with like every new show though. Even with Ghost Files, which is, which is you know, we've ghost hunted before. It's, it wasn't like our first rodeo. We're the best ghost hunters who ever lived. Um, but even that, like in the early goings, it was it was like the, especially the studio stuff. Mm -hmm. It was like a little like, oh, how do we do this? Because it is different, obviously. This is like true mystery stuff. It's not a, a full photocopy of true crime in any sense, because uh, we're discussing weird yeah. things. And the vibe is different too. It yeah. took a little bit of figuring out the vibe. I remember when I first walked onto set. I was thinking like more traditional over the shoulder shots, like, you know, between Shane, I mean, this might be really inside baseball, but I liked the, actually the angles you chose. Mm -hmm. like, so how did you how did you choose the angles for uh, the show? Because it's different than any of our other shows in that sense. Yeah, um, we worked with our DP Juice who wanted to use Dana dollies. And I, we hadn't done that before where it's just very slowly moving on two of the cameras. Unfortunately, that also means that more space is taken up. So it was a little bit of necessity in that we had like three planes to work with and obviously this area is open space so we just had to kind of like carefully place a camera in wherever there was room. Yeah, yeah. And I think it worked out well. There were a couple things I would have changed, but. Um, I think that's also why the set was so uh, surprising when we first walked onto it because it was, yeah. Yeah. out of all the sets we've had, it is the most like encompassing. It's like, it's essentially like three walls. Yeah. There was just a lot going on, so we needed a little bit more coverage. Um, in a perfect world, we would just be in a box. Indeed, that would be I, nice. I would love that. Like Season a 360 two. box that we could like shoot. One uh, of these days, we're gonna get in a box. <laughs> one of these days, I'm gonna, put, gonna put you put in, a in a box. <laughs> one of the things that I wanted in the show, and it's just an example of how basic my instructions were in the beginning, I was like, I think we should have a cork board. I wanna go back to the cork board, and I think that will be how we present the theories, and that will save us on animation, I think it was Brittany who was like, we should have some sort of element where you reveal certain items of the corkboard so that it kind of, you know, it, there's a little bit of a flow to it. What was that process of, of the corkboard like? Because I know that was a little- daunting. The corkboards, 
uh, like came to be in the week or two leading yeah. up to this. So, yeah. <laughs> so there was like, you guys were like, there was the basic like download, and then we had several <laughs> brainstorms leading up, and it was one of the last brainstorms. Or <laughs> this makes me sound like a crazy person. Like, I think there should be a cork board. Let's make the cork board, make it happen, and it's, then just walk it's out. It's funny too, because a lot of Ryan, like Annie was saying, Ryan tends to communicate via Slack. It's very stream of conscious. <laughs> so I can't count how many times it's. Like, it'll be a 40 chunk message from Ryan, and in the middle of it, he'll be like, wait a minute. Yeah. <laughs> and and everyone sometimes... at Watcher just just grabs their their chairs, like, all right, here we go. Sometimes also Ryan backs away from his initial ideas, like 20 minutes later. You know what it is? That's actually what it's like to live inside my head. I'm not used to having to, like, collaborate or delegate when it comes to a show, which is why this process was so amazing. It was like, oh, this is so much easier when you have you could just lean on everyone else and rely on their talents. But when I'm just like sitting alone, I argue with myself. Yeah, and that do. conversation is like in my head. Sometimes out loud. Sometimes out loud. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, the, the cork board I know was crazy in the morning though. Uh, we had Brendan and Violet, our production interns, cutting, cutting stuff. A yeah. Cutting. A lot of cutting. We filmed these over three days and every night we would restart. Because we only have one cork board, so if yeah. we shoot back to back to back, we would always have to reset. And the first two episodes, it was kind of an ordeal, figure out where things should go. And we had to figure out a system of how we could memorize the route because they were all yeah. covered. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We didn't know um, what to do. You can definitely tell. Did you feel any of, of the weight of audience expectation? Because this is kind of, in a way, a spiritual successor to a show we did down the road. BuzzFeed like, Unsolved True Crime. Okay, well, I was gonna play it coy, but you can go <laughs> ahead and just spell it out. Were uh, you worried that you had to appease all the true crime sickos, all those sick puppies out there? I was certainly a little worried. Were you worried? Uh, because it wasn't true crime, I think that appeased me, yeah. my fears a you little don't bit. Have to because worry about it as much, yeah. yeah, it's it felt like somewhat of a successor, but also not really. I get, I fully understand. For there's, me. there's probably people out there who are like, I, look, I love murder. I love the, the crimes. I, I'm sad. This is not for me. And look, we get it. Mm -hmm. But yeah. for the rest of you who are just here for some fun mysteries, we're going to be talking about some pretty freaky stuff, man. But would love more supernatural stuff next That'd time. be fun. Yeah. More we were actually kids. talking yeah, uh, a couple days ago about like, is there ever a, a world where there's like a location version of this? Which That'd I could see that happening in the future. We go out there with our little investigator notebooks. Yeah. It, it happened every now and then on, on the old true crime show. Um, and yeah. I could see there being justification for we it. We go to a crime scene, we point at things. Yeah. Record it with our iPhones. Hey, look at him pointing. <laughs> There's something there. <laughs> and under it, you would have Something me, happened here. It would be me grumbling under that Bye. video. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm sure there'd be some version of that. Maybe we'll Cryptid go. Cryptid stuff is fun. We you could know? go out and, on, and hunt a cryptid. Or perhaps there is some sort of mystery files, ghost files yeah. crossover. Or the treasure hunt, like that wasn't really a true crime thing. That's true. But, you know, that's a mystery. And was that, that was definitely supernatural. That was, was, that was true crime. crime. That was true, that was true crime. crime. Yeah, mm. that was true crime. We were getting pretty fast and loose with it there. <laughs> yeah, you know, because yeah. we were tired of it. Do you know this guy was in an episode of that one Anthony show at Buzzfeed? Yeah, he was. Zach worked with him. What? The he, DB Tuber himself? Yeah, he 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 was in an episode of Zach Kornfeld worked. No, on? no. Uh, Evans from the Gaming Channel. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The Is that Chisniski? Not gonna attempt his last. No, name. No, Polish. No, no, I don't want to. I, I, I don't can attempt it because I am Polish. Great don't. guy, great guy. Yeah. But he did this very viral video. On, oh, so so it was like I like, robbed a bank X, and now X robber I'm playing. Plays well, I want to watch that because I want to no. know. Here's the thing: I walked away from this thing being like, you know what? He didn't hurt. I mean, he so he, he maced some people. We've all done it. Uh, <laughs> it's like hard, it's like hard resetting someone's face. That's easy. It seems like he's really turned it around. He's an author now. I'm I'm like happy for the guy. I did I did feel well. I was just like, oh man, I hope he. He doesn't mind having all this I publicity, but then I saw all of the videos he's done. He loves it. He does. So I'm I, just like, I he's don't gonna, know. He's, he's gonna have a great I think time. we also landed in the episode. We were like, you know what? He's got a nice little life for himself. Yeah. He seems to have learned his lessons. And so. we, had, we we summed it up really nicely at the Invite end. Invite us to like, dinner. He made some bad decisions. <laughs> yeah, he's got a nice gazebo now. He has a nice gazebo. I love a gazebo. Me too. I don't know if that was his gazebo, but. Well, <laughs> that was his gazebo? It could be. Well, Annie, tremendous work. 
Uh, yeah, well done. The season came out spectacular. I think people are going to love it. Hopefully we could do a season two. We'll see. You guys got to watch it, though. It's up to you. It is up to you. <laughs> and you. Viewers like you make all the difference. And you. Well, thanks for stopping by. And we'll see you later. Oh. When you step behind the camera. <laughs> I'll, because I'll that's where you're going. Here. You're going to just walk behind the camera. Isn't that kind of fun? She's going to be here. She's actually like a foot away from it's us. It's like a three minute long outro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Goodbye. See you later, Andy. Goodbye. <laughs> I put on my right sock inside out. Oh no. Hi. Oh, well. We're back. Oh, we're, we're, we're recording? Yeah. Did they get the whole sock it's thing? It's time for some questions. About? Yeah, let's move on to the Q&A section of Mystery Files Debrief. Here are some of our favorite questions pulled from patreon.com slash watcher and also from the YouTube comments section. By the way, I don't know if people know this, but if you go to patreon.com slash watcher, you can actually watch these episodes a whole week early. That's good information. That's good information. And all life is is what you do with good information. What are you going to do with that information that you can watch the episodes one week early? Go to Patreon or, or don't. <laughs> uh, but it's a great value. It is a we great We put one. a lot of fun stuff over there. Okay, our first question is from YouTube. Rochelle Chen 5338 asks, what would be in your robbery kit? Popcorn. I was gonna say something snack, snack wise. Well, you're gonna get hungry. I mean, I guess if you really wanted to have pocket energy, you'd, you know, probably put like a, not sponsored by them, but like something like a Cliff Bar. Every time we go on a ghost hunt, I always chuck one or two in yeah. my, in my backpack, and I, I never eat them. What actually would I put in my robbery kit? I mean, probably pantyhose, uh, so you could put it over your face because oh, it makes sure, your sure, face sure, look sure, real sure, funny. Sure. That's yeah. not for me. I or mean, a good disguise. You know, for the tops and the bottoms. Uh, I honestly think mace is a good, or bear pepper spray. It's a decent, it's a decent weapon. Uh, look, I'm not gonna rob a bank. I don't want to mace people, but if I had, if if I'm a bad person, I'm going there and I'm, I want to inflict, you know, <laughs> just spray them. Just no. spray them. What about like uh, uh, nunchucks? Is it nunchucks? That's good. Is it numchuck, nunchucks? I think it's nunchucks. Nunchucks, yeah. right, yeah. Numchucks. It's numchucks. funny when people say numchucks. It would be fun if it was numchucks, though, because you're smacking people, right? And I don't think I'd get jail time for smacking a bank teller with nunchucks. I bet there's some pretty gnarly numchuck fails on YouTube, I'm right? Sure. I want to see these. Nunchucks and ninja stars would be Because, like, my people kit. get those going real fast. Yeah. Those gotta hurt. Well, sometimes they get really, like, <laughs> they get really cocky. No, wait, 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 wait. And they, sometimes they go between the legs. <laughs> That bad boy yeah, yeah, comes yeah. around the wrong way. And You're looking you at a one-way ticket to Hurtville. And do you remember when the turtles would do it with sausages? Oh yeah, dude, I do remember that. That was pretty good. Like kielbasa? <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'll do. Yeah. I'll bring sausages that double as nunchucks, because then it's a snack, but if you need to. I don't think it would inflict any kind of damage though if you hit somebody with like a raw sausage or like even a cooked sausage for that matter. They would have to be like frozen sausages. For it could be frozen. And then I could, I guess, sort of just like That's gum disgusting. it for a little you bit. You would eat like a sausage popsicle? I would gum it for a little bit till it warmed up and then I'd start to winnow my teeth in there a little bit. Yeah. It's like practice for when you're an elderly person, right? I, I'm sure there's other things that I would put in there, but those are top of my hat. Nunchucks, and, nunchucks and ninja stars for yeah, me. And yeah. pantyhose. Okay, moving on. Is it weird not being able to say, will remain unsolved? Insert Ryan unsolved voice here. It was a little weird. I remember the day of we were, us shooting, I changed the copy because I was like, we need some sort of like finisher here. And I think what we landed on was- Will remain a will, mystery. Or will it simply be a mystery? Yeah. I thought it was really funny that Shane always, it really pissed me off when he would do this in Unsolved, when he would just say, let it be a mystery. And I just thought it'd be funny if we worked that into the copy. Yeah, though there were, I don't know if any of them made the cut, but there were a few times where I looked directly at the camera and said, unsolved. You, it, yeah. <laughs> you know, I can say it. I can say it. We're just gonna bleep you every time. I'll say it, I don't give a shit. I think it's really funny. It's just a word. It's funny for you to be they like. They couldn't copyright the word because <laughs> the it, show was called Buzzfeed Unsolved. <laughs> if I looked at the camera and said, I guess it'll just be Buzzfeed Unsolved. <laughs> I just think we gotta take the word back, you know? Nah, I don't think we do. I think we leave it be. Okay. We let it be. Question for Shane, is that armchair as comfy as it looks? I'm curious enough that I paused the video like a minute in to ask so I wouldn't forget. I don't know, it just looks cozy as hell. It was. It's pretty comfy. That was a, a, it's maybe the most comfortable chair we've ever shot with. That's true. I, as I mentioned earlier, I, I'm sort of already, like, you know, I get in a comfy chair, I kind of lounge, you know? So when yeah. I was in it, I was, it was really vibing. 
No, that chair was great. You'll see that in, in the next episode when Shane and I interact and I'm the one sitting in the chair. I loved it. You loved it. You, were, great. you were positively melting. I napped. Next question. Katie, can you really call this the perfect crime considering he got caught? I always thought the hallmark of a perfect crime was that not happening. <laughs> I could sense the sass there, Katie. And you know what? You do have a point. I suppose it's not the perfect uh, crime. I think it's the perfect crime because it's funny. Um, but you know. In the end, he learned his lesson. His wife stuck by his side, very sweet of her. Yeah. He's got a nice gazebo. He does. It seems like he sort of landed on his feet in a way that would say to me, maybe what he received in the end, wisdom, uh, you know, a nice family life, maybe that's worth all the fortunes he was seeking. And in a way, isn't that the perfect crime? Sure, you know what, I'll go with it. I yeah, agree. In, in a way, isn't that the perfect crime? Well, let's go to the next question, I think. This next one's from Hello, it's Ellie1722. Love the show. Wanted to know, did Shane and Ryan pick their own topics for the season? Yeah, we did pick out our own topics. I mean, I picked from a list that had been prepared. <laughs> <laughs> when I did the basic form of the show, I had like a list of topics. I was like, okay, if we're gonna do another mystery show, yeah. here's some topics that I think we could cover that don't involve grisly murder. From that list, I think a lot of them ended up making it into the show, but what was good about it was I had like a basic understanding of all those topics, but I didn't know in depth, like a deep dive, if you will, uh, knowledge of any of those topics. Shane picking from that list, I was like, oh, I get to actually learn about this from Shane, and it's something that I was already kind of generally interested in. Yeah. But yeah, the ones that uh, I covered, I definitely was very, very interested in. Um, yeah. And we also had worked with uh, Rob Blake, who is our researcher slash writer, and he had filled out some other suggestions of other topics. Cause I think DB Tuber actually came from that. So that was one that like he had suggested. But yeah, that was kind of the process. And then we just ran with it. And some of the topics we didn't cover, we'll be able to cover in future some seasons. Juicy stuff that we'll probably get to next season, yeah. Let's go to Aaron Murphy. I sometimes think that if a crime is objectively clever or very funny and no one gets hurt, then the perpetrator should be allowed to get away with it. What clever and or truly hilarious crime would you commit if you knew you would never get in trouble for it? I would figure out a way to get free popcorn. Yeah at any movie theater I went to. And I think I have a couple ideas, because I used to be pretty good at this. AMC back in the day, uh, when you would get a refill for a large popcorn, they would give you a brand new bag of large popcorn. They wouldn't refill your empty large popcorn bag. They would give you a brand new one full of popcorn already. Foolish, foolish. So what I would do. Wait, you did the same thing that I would do. And I, I, we've talked about this before, and uh, this is a beautiful thing about our friendship, is we were doing this before we even met. I was in Illinois doing and this. I was in California. In the Midwestern Bureau of the Colonel Heads. You were over here in California doing this. In, tell in, them, in tell LA, them, Brian, people tell them. worship cinema. I tell would, them. I would go into the theater and I'd be like, I'll take one ticket to Star Tours or Star Wars or whatever. And then I'd come in and I would go into a trash can that, you know, when you leave a theater, there's usually a trash can right by the exit. I would dig through that, yep. find a large popcorn bag, yep. go to the counter and be like, I'd like one free refill for my large popcorn. They'd go, sure, sir. They'd take that bag, crumple it up, put it in the trash and they'd hand me a brand new bag. See, it was their system for making sure you didn't get more than one free refill. Exactly. <laughs> And but they, they underestimated And they the didn't realize what I would be capable of doing. Yeah. And then they stopped the system. And I actually thought, I must have single-handedly ruined that I think them. between you doing it there and me doing it in the Midwest, we were crippling. Agency. I was going once a week and doing this. Yeah. And then for, it worked for years and then it stopped. This is from Kelsey, question for the debrief. Who at Watcher Entertainment would you like to be a part of your crew, AKA who can you trust? This Aussie would like to know. I'm confused by this question. Like who out of the Watcher crew would you put on your heist team? Oh, oh, I was about to say they are on the crew. I she mean, I'll say this, you saw him in the episode, but Carter, Carter's yeah. the man for the job. Man. I think Carter would choke under under the pressure. Oh, he would, but it, I mean- To it, be honest. I, I'd leave And him. look, I think I would Carter too. would be a no loose end situation. Yeah, I'd, I'd be to, like, I'd, have to kill, I'd end up shooting him I'd in the head. I'd have to kill Carter. <laughs> Because Carter, at the end, we'd be like- Carter oh. would twist his ankle or something. No, you know, he'd be like, no one could know about this, but Carter's such a nice guy. If a police officer asked him nicely, like, who did this? He'd have to be like, well, because you asked nicely, it was my cousin, Ryan Bergara. And see, because I know he's like that, a very, very nice boy, I would have to unfortunately take him behind the shed and kill him. <laughs> Imagine Carter being like, can't believe you're gonna do me like that. Uh, uh, I, I don't know. I mean, and honestly, I'd choke during a, a heist too. Who's actually a stone cold killer that I could count on for a heist? 
I would say if I had to do a top three, just off the top of my head, Stephen Lim number one. Yeah. Because I do think he's capable of horrible that would be, things. Yeah, but if Steven's on your team, you're going to be one of the no loose ends. I might be one of the loose ends, so yeah. I'd have to make sure that I was doing this all remote. Yeah. Like he is the Joker. Yeah, he's he is the it, Watcher drone. You go in with a crew, and and every person kills the other person exactly. until it gets to Stephen, and then he's like, peace, peace out, bitch. <laughs> yeah. He'd be the one that one of those clowns go funny. The boss told me something similar, <laughs> and then he hit me with his little Uzi. Uh, I think probably Stephen Lim, but that's a good point. He probably would turn on me. Katie LeBlanc, I think, could also probably carry out a heist because she's from Florida and yeah. she's seen much worse. <laughs> Mark Celestino, very, very steady hands. That guy could open a vault. He also doesn't say much, but you always got to worry about that. I mean, oh. he's a he's a safe cracker. He's a safe cracker. Imagine him with like those like rubber gloves. He wouldn't even need the stethoscope. Gloves. He'd just put his ear to it. Yeah. I'd be like, Mark, you're going to get that vault open? He'd, already be, he'd be like. There'd be a bead of sweat, but no, you wouldn't. By the time like I even minutes. finished the sentence, he'd already be like, already open. And then I would look down at his hands and one would be full of a bag of cash and the other would be a pistol pointed at me. Wow, you don't trust anybody. <laughs> <laughs> Who would I actually trust? Like, you. I would trust you. Yeah, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't. I was gonna say Lizzie Lockard. Probably can't trust her either. She's maybe the most ruthless of them all. She's also from Iowa. And yeah. as Shane knows, they have a uh, turf war between Iowa and Illinois. Yeah, I think she, I could I trust Brittany. Yeah. No. No. <laughs> no, because, she, no, I don't think so. I don't think so. I think she's a dancer. Her boyfriend's a dancer. They have rhythm. You can't trust people. <laughs> they have rhythm. And they're probably like, I don't know, they're probably, they're gonna dance their way out of this one. I don't, I, I can't, I can't trust that. Maybe it is you, you. Yeah. That's, you're the only person I could trust. I'll rob a bank. Today. And I don't think we'd be successful. Well, rob a bank, and then we'll get some free popcorn. From YouTube, Nathan OK asks, how did you decide to make the show super 80s? When we were thinking of the show, I actually sent a clip of the movie It when they're sitting in uh, the garage, they have a little slideshow. And I basically was like, I want it to feel like this. I want it to feel like children in over their heads, kind of doing something that is, you know, no one would ever ask them to do. And, you know, then the, the projector can control the pace of like the whole thing. And then uh, it also would have a feel. Like, I just love that kind of era of storytelling, like E.T., Stranger Things, Super 8, like that whole kind of like feel. And then in terms of actually carrying it out, Annie, Brittany, and then Billy just went to town and really created something amazing. I remember when I first walked on the set, I was just truly, amazed because it was like. He didn't know where he was. Well, it was also like, this looked like what it looked like in my head and I don't think I gave enough detail <laughs> to, to, to make it look like this. And it was really cool to walk on uh, onto a set that, you know, I wasn't really hands-on building and then it was just there. It was yeah. fucking cool. They both feel similarly retro, uh, this and Ghostfire. They're retro, but in a different location in that time yes. era. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Shane was actually pretty integral in creating the, the bunker feel for like, he, he had like a mood board that he created for like, like kind of like a Russian bunker yeah. uh, from like that kind of 80s era. And this feels like if you went down the street, if you drove your bicycle, if you rode your bicycles down the street to a nearby neighborhood. Climbed up out of the bunker. You would, you would then find the this basement. Yeah. Yeah. Amy Claver says, amazing first episode, guys. This show will be a hoot. Oh, that's fun to read. I haven't yeah. read this one. Yeah. You did real good, Ryan. That's not true, wait a second. He chose this question. I did not pick a question that said, you did real good, Ryan. This is a shame question. You did really, really good, Ryan. There's no really, really good. Did you have any concerns prior to releasing the series? Shane, were you high? <laughs> Shane, were you high? You seemed extremely chill and vibey. It's either the devil's lettuce or that comfy ass chair. It occurred to me, I've never been high on camera and I would never want to be because that seems like a nightmare. I've actually never been high on camera either and that does seem like a nightmare based on how I interact with people when I am high. Yeah. Particularly people who are taking my order at a restaurant. It's a nightmare every single time. I get nervous, my hands start to sweat. You have maybe the sweatiest hands of any person I've ever met. Yeah, when I get nervous, it, they're sopping wet. It's like there's a sprinkler, yeah. like right under here. The set itself does inform the vibes. When we're sitting at a desk being like, all right, let's crack into the case, it feels a lot more formal. Yeah. When it feels like you're in your friend's basement, chilling, watching them give a goofy presentation, 
the vibes are good, man. And likewise, when you're standing giving the presentation, so much more freedom to roam. Yeah. And it's a, it's, it's a good time. Did you have any concerns about, what was the, did you have any concerns about it before it? Oh, yeah, I have concerns about everything. Though. Yeah, you do. I have concerns about what I'm gonna have for dinner tonight. Yeah, you do. It does seem right now that the initial response is that people enjoyed the show, but you never know. I am nervous. You're nervous about anything. I think anybody who makes something which is like a, a very uh, raw and vulnerable thing and is like, I think we nailed it. I think everyone's gonna love it. You might be a psychopath. I don't, I, that's a weird impulse to have. I, I'm worried, but I, I'm, I'm hopeful. He's always worried. Well, that does it for this week's debrief of DBTuber. Thank you all for tuning in. And make sure that you tune in on Friday for my presentation of the Tunguska event. Oh, it's gonna be a juicy one. It's a fun one. You're very loose. I'm loose. Unhinged. Something wrong with his brain, some would say. <laughs> and for a chance to be featured on next week's debrief, be sure to leave your theories and questions in the comments or head on over to patreon.com slash watcher to see the episodes a whole week early. Oh. And that way you get an even better chance of your question being picked because we'll see said question for that whole week and be like, hey, we should put this in the episode. What a deal. What a deal. <laughs> That's incredible. Well, I think that does it. We'll see you next week, everybody. Bye bye. Do you have a gazebo? What do you mean, me too? Do you have a gazebo? No, I said I would like to visit the oh, gazebo. I see. If I had a gazebo, you'd be the first I one I'd invite. <laughs>